four eggs, meat, some veggies from Trader Joe's, some cheese. Mucho success. Thank you, beautiful wife. I'd show you her, she's basically not clothed. Oh, life is good. Nine o'clock, morning work's a little bit done. Got some cool shit going on. I booked uh, Drift to Lift tickets. So that's gonna be coming up to film in February. Pretty excited about that. Looks like I'm gonna head down to uh, LA or Southern California and I'm gonna go see uh, John Wellborn, talk to the power athlete dudes, see what he's up to. Check out that new fly ass truck he's getting built. I'm also gonna get a chance to go to Barbara Brigade and talk with Bart Kwan, shoot with those guys. I'm pretty excited to go talk with Bart. I think it's pretty unique that, I mean, that guy is actually a YouTuber for a living. He's kind of the only person I know making it for a living. I mean, I know Omar, uh, but I don't know Omar. Um, so excited to sit down and talk to Bart and actually kind of, I, I, what I want to do is show you guys how much actual work goes into what those guys do and what serious YouTubers do. This isn't a hobby, this isn't a joke, and I'm sure there's someone out there who's pulling it off that way, these guys are not and that's why they've got the following and consistent approach to it that they do because it's a job. I'm also going to head down to San Diego it looks like and shoot some stuff with the Barbell Shrug dudes. Hang out with those guys and see what they've got tinkering in the works now that they all have all moved to the west coast. Time for a little bit of a workout. Uh, going to keep kind of giving a feel out for this groin hamstring thing so I'm going to do a little bit of rowing and uh, some stretching. Just uh, kind of morning cardio type of thing like that. So, have a good time watching that. Mobility are done. Uh, did some hip work, rowing machine, did some 250s, did some kettlebell swings, did some more 250s, and did some uh, kettlebell lunges. So, that's what I got. Now time for a uh, snack. Most likely a protein shake. Yeah. So yesterday did a Q&A on Instagram all about throwing. Let's do a q and I'm gonna answer 10 questions related to throwing. Maybe I'll get some uh, guest help to answer these, who knows? 10 best throwing questions or throws training questions. And we're gonna go ahead and address some of those questions. Also got lucky enough that I've got a uh, world champion Ryan Whiting. Gonna answer a couple questions as well. I think I have a couple other super friends gonna jump in as well. Got a question from ATN. When did I start throwing shot put and what was my personal best? I started in seventh grade. So throwing a eight pound shot, I don't, I don't think I ever threw 50 in middle school. So like 40 was probably a big throw. Uh, and then into high school throwing a 12. My best, my senior year of high school was 59 feet, 11 and three quarter. Then moved to the 16 pound in college and threw 57, 10 or something like that. Uh, I've since thrown 59 and change post collegiately. And my best throw with a 16 pound open stone is 63, two. So those are my PRs, and those span a time distance of from when I was 12 to about the time I was 31. So 
long time. Got uh, Ryan Whiting sent in a video for you guys to answer some of the questions, so enjoy that. Hi, this is Ryan Whiting. I'm just answering a couple questions from Matt here. Um, I'm gonna be looking down at his Instagram comments and trying to figure out what I wanna answer. Uh, I guess I'll start with, um, is it too late to start throwing my senior year in high school? And I really don't think so. I know a couple of elite throwers that um, started pretty late either their junior or senior year and they still got to a great level. So I think any time is a great time to start. Fat Wolverine. What drills have I found to be most beneficial for the spin in the open stone? It's the exact same ones that you're gonna do for throwing a shot put. So 180 drills, you've got stands, and you've got some pauses, and you can work through all of those. 180 drill is just gonna be pivoting on the right foot and then finishing the throw. Your full throw is gonna be just taking full throws also non-reverse full throws to make sure you're getting the hip through, but you've got to be able to do the drills and be able to do the footwork first. So that 180 drill is really going to help you finish getting that right foot through. Those things are going to be key so that the hips lead the hands. This is the big mistake people make. Hey Matt, uh, answering one of the questions from Kay Kretsch. Uh, he asked, how do you feel about training strength and hypertrophy at the same time? Uh, currently right now, I do not work in the range of hypertrophy. I'm not trying to build muscle. Um, I'm working primarily on strength. Though early in my career, I did uh, have to work hypertrophy just to move, get myself bigger. I was a little bit smaller athlete coming in to uh, try to keep up with uh, a lot of athletes. Though um, it is possible to work both uh, when you're, I guess, early in your career. But for me right now, uh, strength is the only place I'm really working at and the accessory exercises is really where I'm working I guess to increase size in my body On deadlifter Have I ever dealt with ulnar nerve subluxation in both arms? I haven't Sorry the next one's from Big Papa 54 What lifts will help a high school athlete the most with throwing and In high school, I kept it pretty simple I did snatch, clean, um, jerks, squat, bench, and deadlift. Um, now I feel that the Olympic movements help the most. Um, the power lifts are great for building a base layer of strength, but when you get to a really high level, the, um, the snatch, the clean, the jerk, those kinds of things will transfer the best to the shot because uh, really you're I don't know, just trying to push it as fast as you can or move it as fast as you can. Uh, and that correlates really strongly to a throw. Okay, Kretsch, how do I feel about training for strength and hypertrophy at the same time? I think it's fine, as long as you realize what you're doing and what your priority is going to be. If you want to be very strong and powerful as an athlete, you're gonna to need to do strength work first and make that your priority. However, if you wanna be putting on mass and uh, you know, looking pretty, because it's not necessary to be strong. Do it as your auxiliary movements. Also, if you're gonna be doing a lot of hypertrophy work, I notice this tends to make people very tight. So you're gonna have to really pay attention to doing your mobility work to keep those muscles loose. And that way you can get into proper positions for throwing. It doesn't seem like you asked a throwing question. Hey Matt, uh, this is a question from uh, Cole Warren 6. He asks, is powerlifting training possible for getting the explosiveness you need to throw? And if not, what would you recommend? And uh, I do powerlifting lifts, the uh, bench, squat, and deadlift. But uh, my goal isn't to use those exercises necessarily for explosiveness. Um, when I do it, it's just looking for the tempo, just making sure I'm moving the bench fast, moving, you know, when I squat, I'm moving quickly. Uh, my goal is to increase distance, get another three or four inches on, on my throw, and my goal isn't to go in there and lift 10, 15 pounds more on each of those lifts. And uh, one of the ways that I monitor how fast I'm moving the bars when I'm doing those exercises, I do use the, uh, the push strength. Uh, I think it's really good. I don't have money for a Tendo unit or anything. So, um, that's it. Adam.
Which Olympic lift, powerlifting movement, squat, deadlift, power clean, snatch, best transfers to throwing? All of them. That's the thing, there isn't one, there isn't one, if I have to pick one that I find regulates my throwing a little bit, typically if my snatch is strong, I'm throwing very far. Also, if my push press is strong, I'm throwing pretty far. It's a full body lift and I need it to be quick and explosive. Um, a slow max powerlifting movement isn't gonna really help me a whole lot as a thrower. However, max strength does play a big part. Stronger guys tend to throw further, as long as you can also be quick. Remember that if you're a thrower and your goal is throwing further, all of the work in the gym is GPP. Don't be the strongest guy out there not throwing very far. Remember your goals. You want to know how often do you throw? Uh, I will throw a shot three times a week and I will either drill or throw a total of five times a week. Hey Matt, this is a question from Eden. He asked, when did I start shot putting and what is my PR? Um, I started shot putting my junior year in high school with a PR of 64.3 and my PR with the 16 pound ball is 73 feet 7 inches. Selena. She wants to get better in the hammer throw but I need help with the release and to increase my spin. How should I do that? It's all repetition. I wish it was something easier. I wish there was a fix but it's just simply repetition. You're 20, you're in college, and you're a thrower. You probably haven't been throwing hammer very long, which is normal, so it's just gonna come with time and effort. But don't just blindly do reps. Think about what you're trying to accomplish every day at practice. That's the biggest thing I can do, is train with a purpose. Matt's probably answered a couple of these, but I'm just throwing them, throwing them out there as I see them. Um, same question again, which Olympic lift, powerlifting movement, best transfers to throwing, um, if I had to pick one, it is the snatch. And that's just because it's um, power from the ground up. Um, full body movement, just like throwing. What do you do to help to keep yourself low in your spin uh, for stones and power through the finish? One of the things I think about is trying to keep an upright torso and then bend at the hips instead of me bending at the low back where I have a tendency to pop up. And being low in the stone has nothing to do with say where your hand is or where your head is. It really has to do with how much knee bend you can have and stay in position and move quickly. The more your knees are bent, to an extent, look, you being below parallel isn't gonna be great, but staying in that power position and loaded with the hips and knees ready to go, you can explode out of that. If your legs are straight throwing, you're probably not gonna do real well unless you have a 600 plus pound bench in your Christian Cantwell. But that's, He's doing something I can't do. He's got a different set of tools. But staying low, it's gotta be trying to keep the hips lower, not the shoulders lower. And that way everything stays balanced over your center bit. What drills have you found open, found most helpful for the spin on the open stone? And since the open stone is, um, the spin in the open stone is just a, uh, a spin with a shot put, I think I'm pretty qualified to answer that. And. Uh, I know Matt, Matt's got some drills out there, and also on my YouTube, it's uh, Ryan Whiting USA on YouTube. I have a series of, of drills for the spin and the shot foot, specifically to the shot foot and discus. Um, you can go check them out. I uh, hope this helps. Thank you, Matt, for asking me to do this. See ya. Garage Gym Memories. Uh, Garage Gym Reviews. What's the best throwing implement for those who want to get started throwing? If you want to get started throwing uh, in the Highland Games, I would recommend the Ballistica from Sornax. You can cover both weights for distance and both, at least start to train both hammers as a novice with that. Now you're not going to be able to use that for your entire career. At some point you're going to have to step the game up and get real implements. You can buy a shot put. Those are extremely cheap from Gill or VS Athletics and you can also find a stone and throw it. So those are the best ones. A special shout out to Ryan Whiting and uh, Reese Hoffa as well for uh, taking some time to answer some of those questions for you guys. Really hope this helps. Um, check out those dudes and follow them. I'll have their uh, Instagrams below as well as Ryan Whiting's YouTube channel. These are really, really knowledgeable guys and they're, they're Olympians for Christ's sake. So they know what they're doing. There's, a, you know, there's, there's such a unique level of skill that these guys have. So I hope you guys learned something from them. Hope you guys enjoy these Q&As and me having some other people chime in to answer some of the questions. And as always, please like, subscribe, and share. Uh, I can't ask that enough. Please share these around. 
You guys have been great. I appreciate all the comments every day. And uh, check out Hey Brand Goods. And uh, don't die.